All right, everybody. Uh, tonight we're going to have a little look at my 125 gallon native tank. Uh, nothing special. I'm actually just getting ready to feed them some dinner. And since I have my camera down here, I thought I would just go ahead and set it up and we'll do a little bit of a feeding video. And you'll just get to see how frantic those shiners will actually go once some food gets in the tank. So I changed my lighting around a little bit so that the opening is at the far end here rather than in the center the way it used to be. So you can see they're already getting ready to come over here. I usually put a lot of food in here because they go through it fast and I want some to get down to the bottom. But they will make quick work of that. Now that I'll grant you is a little more than I normally would put in here uh, just for the sake of this video. So if you can see them down towards the bottom left is the tilapia and the Mayan cichlid. Uh, very outgoing fish. They're not shy at all. In fact, they're slightly aggressive already for as small as they are. They fight with each other all the time. Uh, the other fish, the mystery fish, is seldom seen. I, I get little glimpses of it now and again. I did see it this morning. I was actually going to get my camera out, but as soon as I moved... Um, well, I can actually see him now. I don't know if you'll be able to see him in the camera. Um, but as soon as I moved this morning, I, he darted in and hid in a cave. So I'm still not sure what that is. Uh, I did make an interesting observation the other day. Every fish in this tank and the crayfish, with the possible exception of the mystery fish, I'm not sure what the mystery fish is, but every other fish in this tank uh, is actually a fish that could deal quite well with low-end brackish water. So I could actually convert this over to a native brackish tank with the fish that are already in there. Uh, of course, I have no intention of doing that. I just thought it would be uh, an interesting thing to mention because I was thinking about it um, when I did some research on the Mayan cichlids because I had no idea what they were. Uh, so I looked them up a little bit just to find out about them and found out that sure enough they can do that. Uh, they are urihaline and they can you know, quite easily live in low-end brackish. Uh, the tilapia is a West African fish and likewise lives near estuaries and rivers and can actually swim quite commonly into brackish water. And then the golden shiners are the same way. They live in rivers and estuaries, uh, so they swim downstream into the brackish water of the bays and the harbors and swim back upstream into the fresh. Uh, the mollies, of course, can go all the way up into salt water without any issue. Now. That's something that's commonly talked about, that mollies can go all the way up into salt water. And they can, but it's not really as necessary for the cultivated mollies that we see. Wild mollies probably need uh, harder water or even brackish water for wild mollies. The mollies that we buy at the pet store have been bred for aquarium for so long uh, that they do fine in... Uh, fresh water as well. I do think that you'll probably get a little better uh, color, a little more size, and just a little longer lifespan if you keep them in low-end brackish, the mollies that is. Uh, but if not, again, they've been cultivated to do just fine in fresh water, and of course being a urihaline fish, they can deal with fresh water. Uh, it's just a little harder on their system than being in that harder water or even the brackish water. Uh, the crayfish, of course, they're just tough as nails. They can be in pretty much anything, so I'm not really concerned about them. Uh, I would have to actually look into that a little more just to be certain, but I do think that the crayfish wouldn't have any issues whatsoever uh, in the same way a crab, you know, a Chesapeake Bay Blue, Blue Channel crab, uh, you know, I will crawl so far up the Chesapeake, it's all the way out into fresh water. Um, I used to find them in the Patapsco. You can find them in the Potomac. They're, they're just all over the place and they're in fresh water so I'm assuming the crayfish are similar they can go either or so that's about it I told you they would make quick work of all that food it's pretty much gone and I don't know if that mystery fish in the bottom ever got any at all uh, I do put some algae wafers occasionally and some shrimp pellets in for the crayfish I've only seen the crayfish two or three times since I've put it in there but I do want to make sure it gets plenty of food crayfish will readily eat plants and if they get hungry enough, they'll hunt. And I don't want them taking any of my fish out of here. So far, I haven't had an issue with it. None of the fish seem to sleep really close to the bottom. So I'm not too worried about it. 
Uh, but the plants will get torn up if the crayfish gets hungry, and it's a good chance that they'll get torn up even if he's not hungry. They're just diggers and rooters, and you know they'll probably uproot the plants at some point. So we shall see how that works out. So thanks for watching. Again, this was no real point to this, just a look at my tank for a few minutes. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe, that way you don't miss anything I got in the works right now. I am working on a few videos, so they'll be coming up shortly. You don't want to miss those. So thanks again for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you real soon on the next one.